guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome my name is Zoe but most people know me as ZA Reptiles and today we're going to be talking about UVB and the importance of UVB. What is it? Why is it important? And how you can give it to your animals. So with me today I have Percy my Cuban Knight Anole who is a species that does require UVB. So he's going to be joining us for this video today. So UVB or ultraviolet B radiation is one of the most important wavelengths from the sun for a reptile. Also the thing that causes the sunburns. But for reptiles, it's great. It's perfect. They need it. Most of them need it. Now, UVB is one of the most confusing parts of keeping reptiles. So I'm gonna try to break it down and make it really, really simple. UVB is the most important thing. And it all really comes down to calcium. So our reptiles are able to get vitamin D3 from these UVB rays. They can also get vitamin D from their diet, but they need UVB to turn that unusable vitamin D into usable vitamin D3. So ultimately, UVB equals the animal gets vitamin D3. There's also a lot more science into all of it, but I'm not gonna go into that. If you want to look up UVB and vitamin D3 and how it all works scientifically, go for it. But for the purpose of this video, I'm keeping it nice and simple. So once the animal has that D3, they can't use it on their own. They need help from UVB. So UVB helps them synthesize that, synthesize that vitamin D3 so that their body can use it. Now, vitamin D3 is super important because once it is synthesized and they can use it, that D3 helps to absorb calcium. So without the UVB helping to synthesize that vitamin D3, that vitamin D3 can't absorb calcium, which means the animal is not getting calcium or their body is having to pull it from things like their bones. This then leads to issues like metabolic bone disease, which you guys have heard me talk about a lot because of Arcadius myoguana. On the note, be careful when having a vet test their blood for calcium levels because it probably won't show that their calcium levels are low because they are replenishing their blood calcium levels from their bones. So a blood test isn't always the best indicator of whether they are calcium deficient or not. Now keep in mind, just like your animal needs a heat gradient, they need a UVB gradient as well. UVB is great for most of our reptiles. It's a necessity, they need it. However, they need to be able to get away from it as well. We don't want to be stuck in the sun all day. We need a chance to go into the shade and get away from it. So you want to make sure that there is a place or a way that the animal can get away from the UVB so they're not overdoing it and getting too much. So just to name some species that absolutely must have UVB, you have chameleons, bearded dragons, iguanas, Cuban night anoles, um, lacertas, savannah monitors, uromastics. There's a lot of species that absolutely must have a UVB. So make sure when you are getting an animal, you are doing the right research to find out if that animal needs UVB and what it needs for UVB. So now we're gonna talk about supplemental calcium because like I said, calcium is a huge part of why the animal needs UVB. So providing supplemental calcium ensures that they are getting the amount of calcium they need. Now, some calciums come with vitamin D3 and some come without. I always aim to go for one without because if you are providing adequate, adequate care and lighting in UVB, then they don't need that additional D3 in their calcium. In fact, you can even overdo it. And you don't wanna overdo it with the D3. If they have a good UVB and they're getting enough calcium, you don't have to worry about supplementing D3. Hey! Now keep in mind too, that supplementing calcium with D3 is not a replacement for UVB. You need to have the proper lighting. You can't get away with not supplying a high quality UVB bulb by supplementing vitamin D3. Not gonna work. You need proper lighting. So just like figuring out what you need for lighting, make sure to research supplementation for your species as well to make sure you are providing the right supplementation with the right schedule for that supplementation. So now I'm talk about how to determine what strength you need for UVB for your animals. So the two things you wanna keep in mind when doing this research is where does your animal come from and how big is your enclosure? For example, bearded dragons come from places very sunny and very hot. 
So that needs to be reflected in their lighting as well. Animals like Percy here come from more tropical environments. And so he doesn't have the same UVB that my bearded dragon does. They have different needs and it's our job as their caretakers to meet those needs. And then you look at say an iguana who has a very large enclosure, they might need a stronger UVB to reach more areas where someone in a smaller enclosure wouldn't need something as strong because it would have an easier time reaching the animal. So those are all very important things to keep in mind when picking a UVB. So I'll talk about bad sources of UVB and then we'll talk about good sources of UV, UVB. So there are two bad sources of UVB. One being windows. UVB gets easily blocked out by things. It cannot penetrate glass and wire and mesh severely reduce the amount of UVB coming through. So you cannot deter, you cannot lean on your windows or depend on your windows to supply UVB for your animals because it's not going to work. Now apparently there are windows that are specially made to let UVB through, but I don't think I think a majority of people don't have these. A normal household just has normal windows where UVB is not coming through and you can't open your window and expect UVB to come through the screen because it's filtering out pretty much everything. So you need a UVB bulb. Now the other bad source of UVB are compact fluorescent lights and what I mean by this is those coil UVB bulbs. The ones that are like coiled or have like the two little loopy things. Those are not good sources of UVB. You might be able to get away with those for animals that really don't need much in the way of UVB and you're just adding it to be beneficial, but those do not put off the amount of UVB that an animal like a bearded dragon or an iguana would need. And they die much quicker. So keep in mind when you have UVB, it will put off light for like ever, but the amount of UVB that it puts off drastically reduces over time. So it looks like it's still working when really it's not doing its job. And these compact coil bulbs will lose the amount of UVB they put out really quick and they'll be very ineffective very quickly. Not to mention they focus on a very particular spot when they're shining down as opposed to covering a large area. So now we're gonna talk about the best sources of UVB. The first one obviously being the sun. You can't beat the sun. The sun is the creator of UVB. It's free, it's unfiltered, it's pure. Bonus points, because you're also getting UVA, which is really good for your reptiles because it helps encourage natural behaviors. So if you live in an area where you can keep your animals outside so they can get natural UVB, all the power to you because that is brilliant. Unfortunately, living in New York, I can't do that. <laughs> Which means I have to rely on these next two things that are really good sources of UVB. One being mercury vapor bulbs. So a mercury vapor bulb is a UVB bulb that also gives off heat. So it's like a double whammy. So that is what my jeweled Lucerta has and my iguana at the moment. They both have mercury vapor bulbs that give off plenty of heat for those species that need a high basking spot and lots of really good UVB. Now the best one in my opinion is the Mega Ray. That is what I use is Mega Ray. I've heard nothing good but Mega Ray. That's what all of the iguana owners suggested to me when I got Arcadius and was doing research. They all said Mega Ray. So I love Mega Ray. I think the other one people use is Power Sun. Apparently that's another really good one, but I don't have any experience with that because I use Mega Ray. The next one that's becoming more and more popular and more and more beneficial are linear fluorescent tubes. Now with these, you lose that heat aspect that you get from the natural sun and from mercury vapor bulbs. Linear tubes don't give off heat. However, they give off really good UVB if you get a good quality UVB from a good brand. Now mind you, not all linears are up to par. The two main brands you wanna to stick to are Zoomed Reptisun and Arcadia. Now I will hands down take Arcadia over 
Zoomed Reptisun any day. Arcadia is like an up and coming brand that is amazing. Absolutely amazing. What I really love about them is they have several different options for UVB tubes. So you can really base it on your species. And it can get very, very confusing, but they also have a lighting guide. So you type in your species and then it tells you your different options. So, and it'll also show you a chart, like if you're gonna have your animal this distance away from the tube, get this tube. If it's gonna be this distance away from the tube, get this tube. It's very helpful and they're such high quality. I'm in the process of switching all of my animals to Arcadia tubes. Um, so my bearded dragon has one, Percy has one, my chameleon has one. I have one for Crikey, my jeweled Lacerda, but he hasn't gotten it yet. Um, he still has Mega Ray. And I eventually want my iguana with a Arcadia. The other one is, like I said, Zoomed Reptisun. These are really popular too. A lot of people use these. Um, they were around before Arcadia. So they come in 10.0 and 5.0. So those are kind of your different strengths. And then all these tubes come in T8 and T5, which for a long time was confusing for me. So T8 tubes have been around longer than T5. Um, T5 is also known as a high output UVB. So they are like the new and improved UVB. So I will always buy a T5 over a T8. They are stronger and they are supposed to last much longer. Um, they say that with a T5, you can get a year out of it where a T8 you want to change after six months. Um, so I personally, like, I won't actually go a full year cause that makes me a little skeptical. So I'm end talking about your UV index. So the UV index is obviously how much UV is like being given off and whatnot. And a way to check this at home is to buy a solar meter. Now these are very expensive. I personally don't own one, but I really want one. This is, it's like a temp gun. The little guns you shoot and it tells you the temperature. That's basically what it is, but it tells you the UV index. So you can gauge how much UV your lights are giving off. That way you know if your UVB bulb isn't really working anymore. And so you know you have to change it. Because like I said, you don't truly know because your UVB light will still be giving off light. It just probably won't be giving off the amount of UVB that it should be. So with a solar meter, you can check this and you'll know. And so I really want one. I think that's a really good investment for someone to have that has a lot of animals with UVB tubes or UVB in general. So I think that's a really good investment, something to look into. So I will link all of the lights that I have mentioned and everything that I've mentioned in the description below. I'll make an Amazon list for UVB lighting and I will put that in the link or put that link in the description so you can guys can go right to Amazon and there'll be a whole list of everything I talked about for you to check out. And I will also have a blog post going up with all this information as well. If you want something that you can just go and read and reference as opposed to having to sit through the video to remember what I said. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss more videos and we'll see you for the next video. This is happening. This is my life.